These are all the parts needed to build one of these fans. But I didn't print out uh, an extra propeller yet, so I'm just stealing the one off this. You wind it up like so, and then it blows. And this one goes for about 15 minutes if you wind it up all the way. First, put that aside. Okay, we're gonna deal with the tape measure first. We need the spring out of here. I have two different versions of this fan. One for a 22 millimeter wide spring and one for this fat jumbo spring, which is almost 30 millimeters wide. So we're doing the one with the 30 millimeter wide one. And this is the first one of these I've done. The one I was just showing, that is a 22 millimeter. The only difference between them is just there's one extra part in the other one. And well, I'll have two different sets of 3D printer files for, for this and the other one. Okay. Oh, what do we do first here? Yeah, let's just let it unwind. Right here. Okay, now the spring is loose. I don't actually want this on, so we're just gonna make that go away and deal with it later. And the reason this tape measure looks brand new, other than the fact that the outer covering was already taken off, is because I used a broken tape measure on the other one, then I didn't have another broken tape measure, so I asked a friend who was in town to pick up the tape measure, to pick me up a tape measure with the strongest feeling recoil, and that was this one. Which is also why I ended up with a really fat spring. Okay, uh, <laughs> get this off. Okay, we don't need that. We'll give that to the kids. <sighs> okay, we basically need to get this spring out of here and into here. Preferably without making a huge mess, but possibly with making a huge mess. The, the last time I did it, I just kind of <laughs> let it all out and it went crazy everywhere and then I figured it out from there. <sighs> okay, if the thing turns that way, that means the spring has to go in that way. Maybe... <laughs> So different tape measures have different ways of storing the spring. So, you know, there are gonna be different ways to do this. And you can definitely just pop the whole thing out and it'll go everywhere and look like a big tangled up mess and then slowly wind it from that. But uh, it looks like I can just get it out like this. Oh yeah. And they, these springs are so strong because they actually, whoa, they actually wind backwards on themselves. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. <laughs> it's already starting to fight with me. Oh, it's like a dealing with an octopus. Let go of me, octopus. All right, I don't want this much of the spring. Now, if I'm lucky, I can bend this without it breaking. Okay, good. But if you can't bend it without breaking, just take a lighter and heat up this part and it'll change color a little bit and it'll anneal the metal. But it looks like this end part is already soft, so I can bend it and get it to hook in this little thingy here. Once I get that in. Okay, there's a 50-50 chance I'm gonna be able to get this sucker in here without a mess. All right. I think pretty self-explanatory from here. Just carefully Pull it out of one, get it into the other. 
Ah, it slipped out. Okay, anyway, this is what it looks like if it all comes unraveled. <laughs> uh, let's start that again. I'll just make sure I don't let it slip again. You shall not escape! Come on, come on. Yeah. Alright, I got it back under control now. <laughs> Getting a cramp in my hand, but I'm not stopping. There's no way I'm stopping now. Do not let go, do not let go. All right, once you got it all in there, it's safe. Just don't let this pop out or the whole thing is <laughs> all over the place again. All right, that's step number one. That's the only really physically difficult part here. All right, time for the first bearing, although we could have actually already done this. Um, I bought really cheap bearings that had no oil in them and they had no oil in them so they were pretty stiff so I took a knife and just pried out this little red rubber part sprayed a little oil in there put the rubber thing back in and they're much smoother now if you have nice bearings you might actually have to pop that out scrape out some thick grease and spray in some some loose oil because you want it to you want these to spin really easily Anyway, this fits right, oh yeah, right down in there. And depending on your 3D printer, you may have to do a bit of sanding or filing. I mean, that might happen on any of the parts. And now this piece, let's get my camera. This piece is gonna go in here. However, the end of this spring, has to go through this little slot here, which goes right through. <sighs> okay, so I gotta get that, I gotta get that through there and put it in there without this entire thing popping out. This is the end of the spring where it's annealed and you can bend it. And I have to keep reminding myself, do not pull this up because the whole thing will go flying. All right, I guess it doesn't really matter which direction I go. Oh, the other side. And again, I just want to make sure this does not pop out. And, okay, that's through there. And uh, let's see, how do I want to do that to make sure it doesn't come out? I guess I can just fold it back. Fold it back on itself. And I'll keep it in there. Okay. Now we got that in. You turn that. It goes back. Great. Okay, what's the next step? Okay, next is this piece, which has hexagonal here and square there. And the square has a little slot that's going to correspond to the slot that's in here where the spring is. This has to fit in there. Make sure it's... Yeah. Now I gotta make sure it gets in there all the way. Is it in there all the way? I'm not even sure. Looks a little crooked. Hold on, let me just... Yeah, be careful not to break the parts, but you do need to get them together all the way. All right, so that's in there. Now what goes on there is this ratchety thing. And it goes, let's see, you gotta turn it that way and then it's gotta hook in that way. So it goes like that.
Very good, very good. And then there are four of these little teeth that fit in here. And when I printed out the ratchet thing, my 3D printer kind of has a lot of stringing. You know, it makes like little spider webby things. So I had to scrape those off and do a bit of filing to get these to fit really nicely. But uh, yeah, if you, you might have to do a bit of filing, whatever. But these little teeth should should rebound out, so that when you take this piece and put it on here, you can turn that, and the little the little teeth will grab into it. So it's a one way a one way ratchet. Beautiful. Now to keep all that together, put one of these, this guy right here, put that on top of there. And hopefully that fits pretty snug on the square part. Make sure it's lined up right. Yeah. Now if you really want to make sure this doesn't come apart, you could take a soldering iron and just melt a tiny little bit so this, this piece doesn't come off. But it looks like mine is actually on there pretty good. So I think that's fine. Yeah. All right, so that's the basic power thing. At this point, you should be able to turn it and have it go. But you don't want to just let it start spinning around like crazy because the whole thing might fly apart or something. Just, you know. Don't be nuts with it. Um, one thing I like to do here is I left a hole through this hole. I can't see it at this end because it's kind of covered up. But there's a hole right through the middle of here. And I like to put a steel rod right through the middle of there just to make the whole thing stronger. Now I do have one of these fans that doesn't have it and it hasn't broken yet. So maybe it's not necessary, but I like to do it anyway. I'm going to do that right after I put this on. So this is a, just a little collar that goes on this side. Right here. It should fit pretty snug. Maybe not that snug. I might need to file it a little bit. Yeah, let me... I have a little piece of sandpaper here. Let me sand it just a little bit. All right, I got that little collar on. I also drilled this out to a size of rod that I have. And just put a steel rod through there, which is not totally necessary. However, it makes me feel like it's not gonna break. Another thing I've done is this plastic rubs on, on the plastic in here. So these two parts rub on each other. And to make them slide more easily, you can scribble on one side with a pencil, like literally just scribble on it with a pencil and get some graphite in the seam. It slides so much easier. All right, so that's looking pretty good. What's next here? All right, I want to put a steel rod in this piece too. I didn't show you that one, so let me show you this one. Okay, this is the rod I want to put in. This is the same kind of rod, but I put it in my drill this is a while ago, I've done this many times now. And then ran the drill with some sandpaper on it to, to get it to be a slightly smaller diameter. And then just took a file and scratched down the length to make it rough. So that way I should be able to, as long as I'm not too uh, fast, um, I can ream out the hole to be slightly smaller than this, like a tiny bit smaller. I should get, I should have some water while I'm doing this on here so I don't melt the plastic. So I'm just going to go really slow. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna put this in, screwing it in. So it should heat up and melt as it goes in, and then when it cools, it should be like really locked in there. So I only wanna do this when I'm sure I don't ever wanna take it out. Okay, that's it. That is in there. All right, well now I think it's just a matter of slapping the parts together. These I have not filed at all. Okay, good. Beauty. See, I made these little slots so these can expand a little bit so they don't have to be perfect, perfect for the bearings. Plus, it makes it kind of hold them in because it's springy. Okay, my four um, bearings. Now, which one of these is the front and which one's the back? I don't think it actually matters. I don't think it matters. The top and the bottom do matter. I'm lucky these will just snuggly fit together. Might have to file a little bit. Oh. Oh, looks like they stuck together. One could, of course, put screws in here to hold it together, but if your parts came out real snug like mine, there's no need. All right, let's get the key on there. Now this is the part where it can be a little demoralizing for a minute because it won't perfectly, oh, it worked right away. <laughs> but it's stiff, you know, like it's not really working that well. But uh, you can see it's already getting faster. As it starts running, it wears off little rough parts on the gears and starts running better. So if you get yours to this point and you wind it up and it doesn't immediately start going, just, you know, give it a little help. And just run it a bunch and it, it should loosen up. Yeah, it's already speeding up. My 3D printer is pretty awesome. Um, I didn't I didn't do anything to the gear teeth. However, if yours isn't quite as good, I have a Soval SV06 and I'm using default settings, just the settings that came with it. Um, but if your gear teeth don't come out as good as these, you can just take a file and just, you know, just go through every tooth just to knock down any little rough bits and stuff like that. But if you're lucky, like I just was, it'll work right away and let's get the propeller on it. Oh, sometimes you have to give it a little, like, a little nudge. Oh, that's great. And I'm sure that if I, uh, you know, run it for a while, wind it, run it for a while, you know, after a few cycles, it'll be smoother, go a little faster. This is actually pretty good, though. That's a nice breeze. That's a good speed right there. A little more breeze would be nice, though. So, 35. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, I think that might be about it. No, oh, 41. Yeah, it's starting to get lost. Man, I think that's going to go for a while. I have two different versions here. This one works with like a 28, 29 millimeter wide spring. This one works with a 22 millimeter wide spring. This is the one I made first. 
and then I got the fat spring, which took up the entire space in here. But when I had the 22 millimeter wide spring, the spring goes to about here, and then at this end, there's sort of like a bicycle spoke piece inside here that touches the middle that keeps, that keeps this centered, keeps it from wobbling. So there's just one extra piece here. And with this one, because the spring takes up basically the entire space in here, instead of having a piece inside that touches the middle to keep it centered, I just made a, a lip come off this gear and then the lip coming off this gear is slightly smaller than the one here and they just kind of nestle into each other and that's what keeps this one centered. So, you know, check your tape measure, measure your spring. This is a 22 millimeter spring and it's just got an extra part. This is a 29-ish millimeter spring. So I'm going to upload the files for both of these. Oh, I should also mention that I'm giving this out for free and I kind of live off donations, so please feel free to donate. I have a Patreon and a PayPal and Bitcoin. All, all this stuff's down in my description here. And the reason I do things like that is because I know there's some 12-year-old kid out there somewhere who wants to build this and doesn't have a credit card. And I think that's worth, you know, losing a bit of profit so, so that guy, so that kid can do it. So if you donate any money, you're, you're helping out a 12-year-old kid who wants to who wants to make this and, you know, be inspired to get into science and stuff. Anyway, uh, right now this one's been going for four minutes and eight seconds. All right, I think that's slow enough. 1445. Dude, that's pretty good.